Municipal bonds took a big hit this summer, falling lower than other riskier types of bonds. These traditionally safe tax-free bonds suffered a one-two punch as interest rates rose and after Detroit filed for bankruptcy, marking the biggest municipal bankruptcy of all time. So are Moody's oversold? Is it time to get in? Here to weigh in is Stephen Winterstein, Chief Municipal Bond Strategist for Wilmington Trust. Steve, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. So uh, Detroit's record-setting bankruptcy really seemed to throw investors for a loop, igniting credit fears. Uh, at the risk of sounding cliche, have investors essentially thrown the baby out with the bathwater? Are Mooney's oversold? Well, I think they are. And I think that Detroit is a, a great example of where headlines can grab a hold of the municipal bond market and invest Investors overreact. They sell their mu municipal bond funds, forcing prices down and yields going up. And I think that's exactly what happened. So then what is the real risk of default now when you look across municipalities? I know it's difficult to paint the space with a broad brush, but generally speaking, what's your sense? Well, we've seen default rates tick up a little bit over the last year or so. But as a, as a percentage of the entire market, they still tend to trend about 50 basis points or one half of 1% of the entire market. So it's a $3.7 trillion market and with a default rate of less than one half of one percent I think the the uh, default risk is relatively benign but when it does happen if it's in an investors portfolio it can really have an adverse effect on returns so we need to be very careful about what what an investor owns well and on top of the Detroit bankruptcy investors are also grappling with basically a 130 basis point move upward in yields right as the Fed sets the stage to begin tapering its bond purchases what would a Fed taper mean for municipal bonds I mean do we risk yields moving higher from here we certainly do uh, there's always a risk of, of yields moving moving higher, and the chairman has set the stage for that. However, um, in, in my judgment, there's, there's no uh, evidence that, that uh, one can forecast rates over long periods of time consistently and accurately. And to that end, I would say that I've seen municipal rates uh, move in lockstep with treasuries from time to time and other bond markets, but I've also seen them uh, decouple, if you will, and sometimes even move in opposite directions. So specifically, the tapering comments uh, may or may not drive municipal bond rates higher. I think ultimately it's going to be um, the fundamentals of the economics rather than headline risk like we saw back in the in the spring. Steve, if rates do continue to move higher though, how do I protect myself as a municipal bond investor? Well, uh, Jennifer, that, that, that's the, the big question that everyone's asking themselves. And the answer uh, predominantly lies in, in what interest rate risk are you, are you willing to take in your portfolio. In other words, the longer my portfolio's maturity or duration is, the more price sensitive it is to a change in interest rates. And we can buy municipal bonds all across the yield curve. So one of the things that's very important for an investor to know before they enter that asset class is what is the price volatility of a portfolio that I might be interested in investing in, whether it's a fund or a separately managed account. And if that it's inappropriate, then they should back it off a little bit and maybe focus some, uh, somewhere on the shorter end of the yield curve and accept maybe a slightly lower yield, but not have that price sensitivity. And that's one way to protect themselves. Well, clearly not all municipal bonds are created equal, right? There are certain corners of the market that have greater credit risk than others. As you said, depending on what rates do, you may want to shorten your durations. Uh, which areas of the municipal bond market do you like now? And what characteristics do I need to look for as an investor? Well, the, the, the answer to your question is we like essential services. So certainly state and local tax back debt, essential services like water and sewer authorities, uh, toll roads and so forth, the, the, the riskier sectors are, um, are areas that individual investors, if they're doing this on their own, constructing portfolios, should probably avoid. Those would include things like student loans, things like multifamily and single family housing, life care facilities, nursing homes. Those tend to be the riskier sectors and more uh, subject to the risk of default than, say, uh, a tax back debt where the uh, municipality, the city, the state can raise taxes to pay their, uh, their interest and principal costs. 
What about some of these pension obligations, right? We saw Moody's downgrade uh, Chicago based on that. Uh, is that kind of the, the biggest risk, the 800 pound gorilla, as far as some of these municipalities, cities are concerned? I, th I think it's a risk. It, it is a risk, but different municipalities are dealing and different states are dealing with the problem in different ways. Some states are moving to a 401k kind of pension uh, plan. And so in the long run, that should help solve the problem. It certainly isn't an elixir that's going to take care of it today, but that's moving in the right direction. And other, other uh, local municipalities are raising taxes or dealing with these problems in, in, uh, in a more direct way. Uh, some cities and states, not so much. And, and those are the ones that we have to be careful of. In the end, the individual investor ought to, uh, in my judgment, ought to seek professional guidance in, in, in these matters. Because really what it takes is good old-fashioned roll-up-your-sleeves research to understand the risks in pension liabilities, what we call OPEP, other post-employment uh, benefits such as health care and so forth. And so I think that's, that's uh, professional, professional management is probably the most important thing that an individual investor can do to help manage and quantify and, and, and navigate those risks. Steve, thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you very I appreciate much. your insight. Hope it's, you'll come back and see us soon. Thank you very much for having me.